Hey guys, Jeff Gibberman, Registered Dietitian here, and today I'm making a video about exercise intensity levels and body composition. So when you hear body composition, um, I hope most of you think about body fat versus muscle. Um, so at some point, most people are trying to manipulate their body composition. Either they're trying to gain muscle, or they're trying to lose fat, or they're trying to do both at the same time. Having worked as a trainer, what I see a lot of is that people tend to diet and not eat enough and then over-exercise and then they have a hard time losing body fat but they don't necessarily understand that it is possible to under-eat, over-exercise and then either uh, maintain or not be able to lose your body fat. So why does this happen? Well, when your body is not getting enough total energy in, um, on top of what your body already needs energy for, like your heart pumping and your organs to function, um, it can't really increase your muscle mass size. So for example, your muscle mass, if you're trying to improve your, your muscle mass or density, you need to eat enough total ca calories and eat enough total protein. If you're not getting those things in, then you're kind of putting your body in an inflammatory situation. And then what happens is your body enacts a protection protective mechanism where it literally slows down your body's fat burning throughout the day and then actively tries to store more body fat from the food that you eat even if it's not enough for your body's needs. So that's the part that most people tend to not really understand when it comes to body composition and energy balance. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit more about um, heart rate zones and how those can impact your body composition because um, you see a lot of people where they do exercise at a really high intensity um, for a long period of time and they think that that's maybe the best way to get them their body composition results that they desire. So what I have here is I have a chart and this one through five here, this is the different heart rate zones you may have heard of before. Um, so in these different zones as you go up your heart rate goes up. So this responds to um, different levels of activity. So for example, maybe one, you're walking, maybe two, you're uh, riding on a bike or maybe one of those uh, stationary bikes at the gym. Um, three, maybe you're doing uh, uh, the elliptical, maybe four is like a, a jog and five is maybe more like sprinting activities. Um, so as you can see, as you get higher in intensity, your heart rate is going to increase because your body's trying to pump more blood and get more oxygen to the tissues of your body as fast as it can. On the other side of this chart, I have um, the breakdown of how much fat your body's using for energy and how much sugar your body's using for energy in these different heart rate zones. Um, I want you to keep in mind that your heart rate zones can change depending on your uh, your exercise fitness level. So as you uh, do an activity more than once and then increase the duration um, or the weight needed to do that, you are improving your cardiovascular fitness. Um, so, for example, as you can see, well, first I, I want to mention that your body has different energy systems that it can convert between. So, for example, your body can use beta oxidation, which is fat burning, um, as an energy source, but that requires oxygen. Um, your body can also use its sugar stores, so your sugars that you eat that you get from the food that you eat is stored in your muscle and it's circulated regularly throughout your blood. That's also used as a form of energy. So what you'll notice here is that as you increase your intensity of your exercise, your heart rate's going higher. Not only that, but the percentage of fat that you burn ironically decreases. So you might think intuitively that, oh, the, the harder you're working, the more fat you're burning. But what happens is it actually decreases. Um, so you might have heard of the term aerobic exercise before and, and thought, what is that? Well, aerobic exercise means that you're, you're functioning at an activity level where you're requiring um, a lot of oxygen and that oxygen is used to help your body burn fat. So what your body does as you increase intensity is that your oxygen consumption can't keep up um, with the energy demands or needs. So the beta oxidation reaction um, can't happen as efficiently as to get as much energy as your body needs. So what your body does at this, cr this crossover level, I'll draw a little line between uh, three and four, is that your body actually stops using beta oxidation as its uh, primary energy source. And it at, you actually burn 0% fat when you're doing really high intensive exercises like uh, bodybuilding or weight training or maybe sprinting um, during, the, during the intense phases of those activities. On the other side, you'll notice that sugar increases as your, as your uh, 
intensity level increases. So once we cross over that gap between uh, heart rate zones three and four, a hundred percent of your energy is being used through sh from uh, your sugar stores on your body. What when is that not a good case? Well, for example, your your sugar is stored in your muscle, um, and if you're doing really intense exercise for long durations of time, you're potentially burning your muscle off, which is different than breaking your muscle down during your weight training routines to build them back stronger. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know this, but a good example of, of this is bodybuilders um, and how they incorporate some of these uh, these theories into their training is that um, bodybuilders will kind of go through a phase before they do their competition where they're um, they're really interested in burning as much body fat as possible. So what do they do? They do a lot of low intensity cardiovascular exercise because it's most efficient at burning body fat, but it's also not going to burn this burn off their muscle um, or their sugar stores in their muscle. So it actually um, helps improve their muscle building process because you're getting more blood flow into the muscle when you're doing these low intensity exercises. So it kind of helps that repair process. Um, so that is what I think most people don't know about body composition, um, different intensity levels, and heart rate zones. Um, and one more thing I wanted to add was about anabolic versus catabolic activity. Um, so anabolic means building up. So when you work out your muscles in the gym, your body you, needs anabolic activity to build and repair those muscles. Um, catabolic is breaking down. So think burning fat. Um, and, and, you know, losing weight or even burning muscle, so breaking down. Your body tends to be under one of these uh, umbrellas at a time. So, for example, I talked earlier about someone that over-exercises, under-eats, and then their body wants to maintain fat. Well, they have an interesting scenario going on because their body, um, although it tries to remain as anabolic as it can by trying to rebuild the muscle that they break down, um, their body is primarily in a catabolic phase and an inflammatory phase since they're not getting enough total energy in. And so this is going to support them, um, you know, not really ever being able to recover from their workouts, from the, um, breaking down their muscle tissue. And then their body, since it's under inflammation, um, it really doesn't get to um, get into that body fat burning phase. It's more about, um, you know, they kind of turn their muscle into catabolic inflammatory activity um, instead of if they were to have enough total energy to, to kind of um, make it through their workouts and recover as optimally as possible. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions about this topic, please respond to the comments below. And if you have any ideas for future videos, please write that as well in the comments below. Thanks for listening and have a good one.